Morena, gorgeous, beautiful sons of God. Woo! Let's stand to our feet. Yeah. Everybody stand to your feet right now. And let's get ready to party. But now, now I'm found God came and he took my life From a non god believer Now the son of the crown From the pits to the palace of the Break the cycle that you're in Let your inner man out For the cause of the kingdom God has figured it out God's got some plan for you Live your life He will show you how to dream Believe Actively Set yourself free Know who you are Keep the fire burning for the kingdom
to Bishop, he was talking about a new era, right? A new era, that's us. We're starting, we're re-going again, and I love our apostle. He always keeps us on edge. He always keeps us moving forward, and I just think he's amazing. So, kia ora whanau, morena. My name is Audrey. My daughter said, don't breathe too much in the mic, Mike. So I'll take a pause. Welcome here today. I'm going to do the notices for us. All right, so as I get ready, I want you to get your tithes and offerings ready. We've got our ushers coming, coming around to collect your gold coins, your millions, your dollar notes. That's right, we're not shy here. We're not shy here. You know, we give, we give for a purpose, for a reason. We give not just for us, but for others. So when I planted a seed, when I gave, it was for others because other people need this too, not just us. Hey, hey, how All right. All right, let's lift those up. Let's hand those around, ushers. Father God, we thank you that we have the ability to tithe. We have the ability to give. Lord, you say just give. Just give no questions. Just give and we will receive. But Father, we give to your purpose, your plan for this soil, this house, this place. And we give with what our bishop said. Because we believe by faith, we walk, and we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. How are we all doing? Thank you, team. I always feel like Beyonce when this team plays. I always give a bit of spit on my husband's head. Sorry, darling. All right. Overcoming Anger is this week, 10th of February. Yeah, let's give a hand for Overcoming Anger. Yep, that's right. I've only done that like 50 times, so don't be shy. Just get on in there. It's, it's an amazing program, Change Lives, our amazing elders, our Jester in town. They know me so well. But yeah, if you want more information, you want to overcome your anger, remember we don't believe in managing, we're overcomers. So that's happening. All right. Successful relationships and marriages is also up. Let's give a cheer for that. We want to be successful, eh? I think I heard Bishop say not many people we've heard throughout our years say that we can be better, that you can have better, that you can get better. Successful relationships so successful for a reason. My husband and I facilitate that program. Yeah. We are. We've got lots of stories. I'll tell you lots of truths. We're an open book. 13th of February, just before. Actually, I just want to say what Bishop said yesterday about let go of the past. You know, relationships keep short accounts. 
is not just with your husband, it's with your children, it's with people, people in general. We've got to learn to keep short accounts. Bishop said, let it go. And I keep saying, yeah, that's right, let it go. Let it go, Kari. Let it go, Kari. Let it go, fire. Pane, let it go. And we'll help you with that. We'll give you some tools for that. All right. And that is just before Valentine's Day. Can I get a ooh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a Valentine's service here. We're going to have the cafe set up. We're going to have some music playing. We're going to ooze you a little bit. We're going to get all your lovey-dubbies on. Don't worry, you don't need a man or a lady to get your lovey-dubbies on and enjoy yourself. Yeah, Valentine's Day is for everybody. And we're going to have a special self-sourcing pudding with fresh ice cream, all right, from the amazing team. Rick and Kerry going to sort that for us. So come along, come down and enjoy afterwards. Invite friends, family to come and celebrate Valentine's Day. It will help you at um, relationships and marriages, what you need to buy for your wife, okay? Yeah. All the ladies go whoop, whoop. Cool, awesome. All right, we're nearly there. Next one, kids ministry. Let's give it up for all our kids ministry. I know, I know it's the leaders' kids out there, eh? I know. No, nah, no, nah, just kidding, especially mine. All right, kids ministry starts 14th of February. We have all stars two to four years old, and we have Destiny kids five to ten. All right, they will just go through the double doors there. Um, our amazing team will help you if you're unsure. So that starts on the 14th of February, okay? Valentine's Day. You get double dip. Yeah. The kids go back. Me. All right. Baby and child dedication. I know we've had some babies, some new babies born. Yeah, because we like breeding in this place. We like having kids, building that next generation. And when you think that you'll stop, yeah, I don't know. You might need to keep going. All right. We love kids. We love kids in this place. Shot out a ton. Okay, are you going to get me back up here? I'm glad Haley's not here. Okay, that is the 28th of February, our baby dedication. Again, invite family and friends to come along. Okay, it's not just for us. All right, have them here. Let them have their children and their babies dedicated. Pastor John will pray over them, give them an on-point word for that day. Can't wait. All right, Man Up Legacy. Let's give a shout for Man Up Legacy. Youth Nation. Man Up Legacy, Youth Nation. How dare they tell us to turn our tops around. <laughs> How dare you. I love it. What I love about Man Up in Legacy is men help men. Okay, so much of our lives, men have gone to women. Hey, and I can say this because I'm a woman. I've seen it. But there's a difference when a man can go to a healed man and help you change your life and move you forward. Okay? If you go, if you're a man and you go to a lady, you need to change that, brothers. Okay? You need to speak to a man. Be bold, be strong. The same for our wahine. Exactly the same. You need to go to a lady. Something powerful in that. So, yeah. That's every Tuesday and Thursday. Check our website. Have a look on there. We'll ask the ladies down. Wherever you live, wherever you want to go, we'll have somewhere for you. Awesome. Ah, okay. Box fit. Monday and Wednesday. Fight fit. Oh, my gosh. We've got you covered here. We've got programs. We've got healing. And then you can get your anger out at box fit. Get fit, get fit. I went the other week. Oh my gosh. I was like, welcome back. And everyone was like, welcome back, Gordy. Thanks, out of time. I loved it. I loved it. It was good to be back, and I had a good smash on those bags out there, Pastor. Woo! Mate. Get in there, team. Only $4. Spread the word. Get in there, get fit. Remember, all around. Fight fit. Got that going too for our brothers as well. Jump on in there. Mean going hard. Are we doing good? Doing all right? Okay. Cool. Last one, ministry time. If you need a little extra, 
because I know the word's coming and I know the word's going to be on point for you. But if you need a little extra, you want to just come up and meet us, just come up the front. We're welcome to um, talk to you, hear you, put you on the right walker. If you have any questions, um, Simon will help them. No, the whole team, the whole team here will help you. But just know that ministry time come up afterwards. Um, we'd love, love to meet you. All right, Fano, I'm going to hand it back to this awesome team. Let's give it up. Thank you, General Audrey. So refreshing having uh, one of our queens up on stage sharing notices. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Let me hear you say yeah. Say yeah. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. 
Somebody worship the name of the Lord right now. Open up your mouth and shout with praise, with adoration to, to our God, our Savior, our Lord. right now yeah yeah that's it come on shout you can shout if you want to come on shout to the Lord singing consume me with all you are and that verse came to my memory that God is a consuming fire there's a fire today that can consume you it burns up all the rubbish clears out all the junk takes out all the rubbish you know what do you chuck what do you do with rubbish you burn the stuff and you know our God's a consuming fire he's able to burn all the rubbish in us he's able to cleanse us of it get rid of it out of us you just got to make yourself available you just got to open yourself up to the king of kings and the lord of lords you just aren't you so thankful we got a big brother his name is jesus he's the lord of lords the king of kings he's your big brother and he is for you he is with you he resides and lives inside of you well wow, give him a shout give him a shout today It's so good to be in church this morning. Man, I just feel like I've had a, a beautiful swim just in this presence. So refreshing. So lovely. Let's give our worship team. That was awesome today. Awesome team. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, um, bless all those who traveled up to Waitangi. Uh, that was a, a great time. Some of went crazy hours of the morning up for the day and back. You're crazy, adventurous for God. I love it. It's awesome. Some of us were a bit soft and went the day before. and uh, But uh, that was just awesome. It was great uh, for those who were able to get there. And what a great day it was. It was cool. It was awesome. I love the adventure. I love the adventure of kingdoms. One of the things that gets me, actually, is it's just not boring. It's not stayed. It's so not religious. It's so not predictable. It's just out the gate. And I love it. Our God is out the gate. He is out there, man. He is out there, and I love that. I love to be out the gate with our Father and our big brother, Jesus. That's awesome. Live outside the gate. Get out of the gate. <laughs> get out of the confinements. You know, you just got to get out there because that's where God is, and you, you'll find a newness and a freshness, and it has the ability to remove tiredness from you. Uh, it's just you can live on less of sleep and still be vital and um, it's just beautiful um, and um, so just bless you heaps um, and uh, be seated how about you turn to your neighbor and just say you're looking amazing fantastic 
well, it seems like ages since I've preached, um, but it's been, I've so enjoyed that series of bishops there, I think it was great, I mean, he can share things for it with his apostolic gifting uh, better than I can as a pastor, and some things are best just to hear directly from, and I actually encourage you to, to tune into Bishop every week um, and listen to him, and um, online or as you go at the gym, listen to it through your earphones or as you're driving around, listen to it, get, get his message every week as well as tuning in here. Uh, it's just, will just so elevate you so quickly. I think it's actually the best of both worlds. Um, uh, having me also in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, I do believe it, actually. <laughs> I do believe it. Um, you don't, if you don't, that's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> But it's so good to be in the house. God, we're, I'm away for the next two weeks. Um, tomorrow, we're about 17 of the boys. We're going to ride down to Invercargill on our bikes. And um, so please be praying for um, good weather, safety, angels um, around us, and um, yeah, and everything else that's good for us. <laughs> and uh, so that'll be great. So I'm looking forward to that. And to shine light, we're going to meet up with some pastors in Queenstown, I think it is, one night. And some on another night in um, uh, where is it? Invercargill and, and some man-ups that are down there. So we're going to go and do some kingdom mahi as we go, which is awesome. And uh, meet some more people and encourage them and, and uh, help them for uh, the movement and for the cause of God. So it's going to be great. So it's not just the holiday. There's a purpose to it. And um, there will be thousands of bikers everywhere. And we're going to be right there in the middle with a big red cross. Hallelujah pointing the way to Christ. So come on, give God a shout for that. Pray, to, pray for us that we'll have divine appointments to witness and share Christ, tell our story. Uh, I know we always do. It, that, it's going to happen, but really I want something extra upon us. I'm not just riding crazy hours, crazy miles for nothing. We've got to do it for the kingdom as much as for our own enjoyment. Amen? So that'll be great. Ali will be back uh, today. She's back today. Um, and uh, it'll be great. Praise the Lord. Let's pray because I want to preach. Thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, to be, Lord, under a, a apostle, to be a sent pastor. Lord, I've never got up and just gone. Lord, I've always known the power to sit and wait until you send me, and you've sent me. You sent me to the Waikato, Lord God, and things were pretty mundane when I came here, Father, in this city. But things have so changed. And, Lord, you've done something where everyone told me that wouldn't happen and couldn't happen. Lord, I was told even to accept and expect failure. But, Lord God, I always knew that you were with me. And, Lord, if you're with me, who can ever be against me? Lord God, when others said this and that, Lord, I believe the opposite. And you've done great and wonderful things. Lord, and I know why, Father, because I love the people. Because you showed me your love. All those years ago, when I was 17, you showed me your love, changed me. And here I am today, Lord, so bless your word to these people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, I just about forgot you were there. <laughs> I started to get caught up there. <laughs> See, if you find that when you're praying, sometimes you just, I literally just about forgot you were there. But anyway, get my head into what I'm doing. <sighs> this is great. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. And verse 18, I want to talk about the glorious liberty, the glorious liberty of the sons of God. The bishop's been here, but there's this one little bit just jumped at me during the week um, when I was up and having some time with God. Um, so let me just read the context. You know these well because bishop's been here the last three weeks, but there's one bit. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for you guys, the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, <coughs> excuse me, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage. And listen to this bit. This is where we're coming from. The creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the, this, this is the key bit, the glorious liberty. Everyone say glorious liberty. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. But let's just 
bring this into what it means is the glorious liberty of the sons of God. That grabbed me. That grabbed me that something that was broken, something that it says is corrupted, dysfunctional, not working, struggling, and all sorts of stuff. It says that which is broken, that which is struggling, that which is corrupted, that which has been marred and scarred and, 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 and broken, he says it's going to come into the ones who might have been once marred, scarred, and broken, but now they've found glorious liberty because only that which has liberty can give liberty to that which is broken or bound. And it says here that God has said that he's got, He is waiting and the world is waiting to deliver everything that's broken and corrupted by the sons of God because they know the power of glorious liberty. I, I, we got to understand the position that God is bringing you into and that actually you are already in the moment you receive Christ. You got to get out of your head and you got to get into what God says about you and how God looks at you and what God says about you and your future. There's too much holding back and, excuse me, and thinking about what you once were instead of who you are and who you are going, what you're going to express in the years and the days and the months ahead. I love this. He says they'll come into the glorious liberty, that, that glorious, that magnificent, that marvelous, that remarkable liberty of the sons of God. Under, understand this here. With the word liberty means this. It means, in the Greek, it means freedom. And yet so often we think that's the very thing we're not is free. We're so struggling with stuff that the enemy, and I want you, it's not you. It, it, it's part, well, it's partly you and it's partly me because I'm human with you on this, but you've got to, I'm speaking to you today. I'm speaking to your spirit man so that that will dominate your flesh man and your old man that should be crucified. And it says here, we've got to understand that he's brought into freedom. You are actually free from every battle you are facing today. And you might be right now saying, oh, that's not true. I've struggled all week. But you're looking at it from your point of view and the point of view of your past. That's the trickery of the devil. This has to be somehow, and I pray in Jesus' name, switched inside of you today. There needs to be turned. I've got to turn something to you in you today. I want to turn your thinking. I want to turn around your mind. I want to turn around your heart. I want to turn you around from thinking you're not free. Because the Bible says you are free. And he whom the Son says free is free in Indeed, not might be, possibly. He says you are free. I got to switch something inside of your heart. I got to switch something inside of your mind today that tells you today what God says is actually accurate and true and real for you today, no matter what you're facing or might be or were yesterday struggling with. So he says that word freedom means this. It means to understand the ability to go at pleasure. It means to no longer be a slave, no longer bound. This word freedom, this word uh, liberty is all connected to slavery. Where you no longer have the freedom, if you're a slave, you do not have the freedom to go where you wanna go. If you're a slave, you do not have the freedom to do what you want to do or have the means to do what you wanna do. That is slavery. And this word here says that the sons are brought into this glorious liberty that there is no restraint on them anymore. There is no limitation on them anymore to be, to do, and to go wherever God has called them and wants them and that they desire to go. You come out from restraint that has bound you up for generations that has been passed down in the family curse into your life and it's bound you and stopped you from moving forward and you keep getting stuck. You make two steps forward and then you tend back again. You go great for a month and next minute you're falling over again. You go great for a year and then you hit a season and you fall over again. I want to switch that around that you would know that he whom the 
Son says free is free indeed, and you no longer have to stay bound and slave to some old ugly demon, ugly family curse, some ugly abuse that got forced upon you to try and wreck and ruin and scar and, listen, mar the image of who you are. And, and he says this, the sons are going to have no restraint. There will be nothing in them that will hinder them from doing everything God puts in their heart and that they desire to do nothing. They will be bold. They will be confident. They will know who they are. Their self-image is out the gate. It is awesome. They are confident. They're self-assured. They're God-assured. They're Christ-assured. And they're self-assured and who they are and where they're going. This glorious liberty where people are so bound and, and the enemy's tried to make us like we're all like them. The, the enemy, and we even sometimes try and be like them to relate, but you don't have to be like them to relate. They are actually looking for the ones who are at glorious liberty within themselves. You just got to be you. And you got to know that you are the Christ now in this earth. You bring messianic anointing, blessing, victory, apostolic power. Every step you take and every place you go. Demons are more afraid of you than you are of them. You just don't know it because the enemy still has you bound in your mind that you're like you used to be. Well, I'm going to kill that sucker. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to throw those tables over like Jesus did in the temple. Some tables in your head need to be turned around, shifted. And so it's going to happen today. <laughs> so... This liberty, this magnificent freedom is what Christ has brought you into. You just want to settle on that. Write this down. Write it down. You've been brought into magnificent, glorious, remarkable freedom, liberty. You need to just dwell on that. Forget about everything else. Look, everyone say the word forget. Say it louder. Say it even louder. Turn to your neighbor and say forget it. Turn to the other neighbor and say, forget it. Forget it. You know, my God is the greatest God at, uh, for forgetting it. But it's even awesome English, forgetting it. God forgets it. Why don't you? Why don't I? It's trickery. Witchcraft that bewitches us to think we're the same person, the same man, the same woman, the same husband as you were yesterday. No, you're not. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone, oh Lord, here we go, if anyone, if anyone, that means anyone, if anyone, if anyone, that means everyone, not just someone. But in everyone, there is a someone, that's me. But then you put yourself in there to anyone. It's all inclusive to those in Christ. Are you in Christ? Are you giving your heart to Jesus? You might not even understand it all. Don't worry about that. Understanding will come. But just know you gave your heart to Jesus. He is now in you and you are in Him. And it says to you, my friend, put your name in there. If anyone is in Christ, it says this, He is a new. New. Everyone say new. New, new, new. new. Who likes new? Who likes a new car? Oh, yeah. Who likes a new bike? Yes, please. Who wants a new house? Yes, please. Who wants some new clothes? Yes, please. Who wants some new undies? Yes, please. <laughs> I reckon after 10 days with these boys, I'll be sending them down to Helen Steins or Farmers, I tell you. You better have clean undies, boys. Uh, new. You like new dress, new outfit, new jeans, new trousers, new jacket, new what, whatever. Who loves new? Oh, well, three of us, the rest of you. Come on, you should be going, yes, Lord. You see that? See right there? 
It's like a hesitant. It's like my daughter was at a Christian school, I won't say which one locally, <clears throat> over a certain side of town. And, um, and the teacher started going on, it was a demon speaking, and about, uh, you should go and buy all your clothes from the second hand shop. And she made the kids feel like if you weren't buying from second hand shop, there was something wrong with you and you were bad and wrong and ungodly. And praise God for my courageous, bold, which didn't surprise me, daughter, who stood up in her class and says, well, my parents buy me new clothes. And I said to her, awesome. That's the one. Do you like new clothes or secondhand clothes? I like new clothes, Daddy. And yet that spirit, that religious spirit, tried to put poverty on her to try and rob the ability and the ultimate revelation of new. Guys, God's going to make a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, new the whole thing. God loves new, man. I would choose new over secondhand any time. And by the way, I have secondhand stuff, so don't get all crappy on me. But that's probably not by choice. When I brought my bike, had 3,000 Ks on. It was, wasn't brand new. It was pretty close to new. But a G riding out of a, of a shop with a brand new one, that would have been more cool. But I didn't have the money for that, so I was happy. With, you know what I'm saying? But don't lessen yourself to new. Too many people think, oh, no, I just want this. And you're always lowered, 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 lowered. So it's too low. I'll have a settle for a $2,000 Corolla. There might be a season for a $2,000 Corolla, maybe a $500 one last year month. But hey, for one month, 500 bucks might be worth it. But you know what I'm saying? But never settle for that. Because this is the problem in our thinking. We all just want second hand. Well, how? You are not second hand. And what God does is not second hand. He doesn't give out second hand blessings. He doesn't raise up second hand sons of God. He doesn't raise up and give you second hand this and that. He gives you the best. And if you're not there, that's only temporary if you would choose to trust God and believe God. Hey, you feel resistance in the atmosphere on that. Because this is a demon. It's a demon of poverty. I wasn't meant to talk on this. It's not one part of my message. But there's a demon in us that wants to try and lower you down, that everything's poor, poor. That's why I, I, I've struggled over years as a pastor. People say, oh, oh, oh well, we can get a secondhand printer. And then every month you're breaking down, spending money, getting it fixed. And, you know, we had, we had that season, though. And, and I received it, and I was thankful to God because it was better than not having one. So amen, hallelujah. But I tell you, it was not my vision. My vision was for a brand new photocopier for the church. That doesn't break down every five minutes, especially when you're in a hurry to get something done, and it's all whole high, and then you've got to run up the shop, and it's stressful. So, but my vision was always, eventually, we brought a new one. Well, at least them, I think it is, because it's a better deal, whatever it is. You see? Everything wants to lower you, 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 lower you down. Tell you what, it's a demon. Go for the best. And leave God with the rest. And if it's stepping stones to get there, carp I, because I'm still on stepping stones to get to what I see. I do not have what I see. No way. I don't think I have anything that I see, actually, to be honest. But that's good because it's got to be bigger than you. It's got to be bigger than you. As again, you're settling for something less. So there's nothing. People might say, you've got a nice house. Yep, it's not bad. Is that your dream home? It could never be my dream home. <laughs> you got a nice bike? Yep, nice bike. Could never be my dream bike. You see what I'm saying? But then I, you've got to catch that. I'm not going to try and justify it. You've got to catch that. That'll help you so much. As a kid, I always used to dream. I used to always dream for the best. I didn't even understand it. And I would want my Lego set, and I'd get a Lego set. And um, then as soon as, I, as soon as I got it, I'd go to the catalog and says, now I want that one. And when I got that, I'd go, I want that matchbox toy. I want that matchbox toy. 
That's when they were 99 cents, which was a lot of money for a family like us. But I would save, I would find a way, I would make a way. Because I never gave up. Do you know that there is how I see you? That's why I never give up on anybody, even if they give up on me or Christ. See, because I always believe bigger. See how something so small actually has become one of the greatest gifts and strengths in my ministry and my walk with Christ. See why I see the golden people and I always see you able to do better and go further. And I actually literally 1 billion percent actually believe it and actually can see it. I can see every one of you doing way better than where you are today. And you might have come a long way, and I know you have, but I actually can see it, I can taste it, I can feel it. It's part of me. I learned that as a little child. I learned it with toys. It transferred to people. See how the enemy wants to lower you down? But all the time, people told me I couldn't have couldn't have, couldn't have, but I believed I could. You've got to keep that very strong because God is the God of the new. And he says, taking too long on that. Anyway, he is, it says, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. New means never been before. Just started. Never been used. So never, ever, listen, been abused. New means fresh, pristine untouched literally means even perfect you get it out of uh, the wrapping of the original it's perfect it's it's pristine and you know what god says about you in christ let me read it if anyone is in christ he is new he is new what do we understand about new what's dumbed us down and tried to rob us from new Oh, I know what it is. It's just the trickery of the devil. Because we haven't focused more that even on the worst day, when every hell is coming against you and hell you might feel is erupting inside of you, you need to grab this verse and you need to say it. The Word of God says it is written. Now that you're walking like your big brother. Your big brother had battles and he said it is written. He went to the Word of God and he put it in his mouth because he had already put it in his heart. And he says, it is written, it is written, it is written. Therefore, if any man is in Christ and I'm in my big brother and he's in me, he says, all things have become new, that I am a new creation. And you need to shout it. You need to declare it. You need to jump up and down and holler it. You need to make it so loud that it starts to drown out the demonic broken voices that the enemies put in our minds from the scars and the mars of letdowns and experiences and abuse and say no to you enemy i am a new creature i am a new creation i am not like that anymore i am not like that Everything else will scream in your head. Yes, you are. You're useless. You're no good. Da, 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 da. Dumb thoughts, crazy. You need to speak. You need to speak to that and say, this is what now God says to me. I am a new, a new, a brand new. I am pristine. I am perfect. I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am spectacular. Oh, they should put a symphony together and sing it out loud. That's what God says about you. New creation. Old things. It doesn't say some things. It says the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. This is one of the most tripped up places the church gets tripped up from us pastors and down as we get tripped up on thinking in the past and not thinking in the future. Behold, all things have become new. You need to tell that to your mind. You need to say it out loud because what you say and your ears hear, your brain is wired by God to respond to. If you wrote saying, I'm useless still, I'm cursed still, I'm never gonna be a good husband, I'm never gonna be a good father, I'm never going to make money that I need to look after my family. I'm never going to this. I'm useless. And look, I've been there. I've, I've gone through times of depression. I've gone through times of all sorts of stuff. 
I've gone through some hell, and a lot of time you would never have known, by the way. But I could tell you, I could speak, I'd probably make you cry. But I persevered, and I stood up, and I said, somehow, God, I am going to get through this. I am a son of God. I am a new creature. I, that verse I learned as a brand new Christian off my heart, because if I hadn't, I would never have made it as a Christian. That's the type of verse you should know off by heart. Seriously, if you're really serious about killing the mental monsters, you've got to replace the voice of the mental monsters with the voice of God in your head. But I had to reset default buttons in my head. The biggest default button under pressure was run, tell you to F off, give you the figure, fingers, and run. I did it my whole life until I met my big brother Christ. And the running stopped. And it was a journey. I get the journey. Very much I get the journey. But I can't live off my journey. I cannot live out of my experience. i got to live out of the truth. Because it's the truth that sets you free. And that truth will be, your truth will be different, all of you. But you've got to replace your truth for God's truth. You holding your truth sometimes is a big sneer. In fact, your truth can be a big demon idol. And you keep bowing down, this is the way I am, this is the way my family is. Bow down, bow down to it, and it'll trip you up, it'll spit you out the other end. Defeated instead of victorious. So you are pristine. You know, this is your reality now. New, brand new, just unpackaged. And we're still getting to know, you're still, the new is still being unpackaged. And I'm looking forward to the new you that you don't even know how new you are. But this year, I'm going to see a new you come forth. The new on the new on the new, because we're unpacking another part of the parcel of the new. Jesus called it, you got it in John 3 verse 7, he says, you've got to be born again. Isn't that awesome? He says, I'm not going to fix you. I'm not going to fix you up. I'm not going to put some new carvies in there, some spark plugs, and rewire you a little bit, and some one part of you. And, you know, he says, you know, I'm not going to give you just an oil change. He didn't say that. He says, no, nah, we're going to start afresh. You've got to be born again. You've got to start afresh. I just had a little grandson born, brand new, fresh, pure, just like his papa. <laughs> no, oh, I wish. I wish I was pure. Anyway, I am though. <laughs> and, you know, brand new, not touched until his mama touched him not touched not corrupted not abused new well guess what when you got Jesus you're a newborn baby that's what the Bible says you're a newborn baby it says yet you even need the breast milk of God's word the milk of God's word that's the biblical terminology in the New Testament amazing isn't it brand new because everything God does he starts from a brand new basis not a second hand basis brand new basis this is resurrection life this is the life of the Christ within us new so Jesus called it born again a new start a new beginning I love it it's just wonderful you see this and this is what I dwelt on this week and you once were defined and you defined yourself maybe as an addict or an alcoholic, but you're not that now. You might have identified yourself as a gangster, a thief, violent, an abuser, angry, jealousy, nasty, a liar, envious, schemer, fraudster. Nice one day and then ugly the other day. But you know what? You are not that now. To the point that if someone says, oh, you used to run with those fellas. Oh, gee, did I? <laughs> Sorry, bro, not me. Oh, I can see by the tattoo on your arm you ran with those brothers, eh? Oh, oh, okay. Not quite sure about that. I think someone did that last night while I was asleep. Because, man, that, I, I don't know. Come on. Oh, you were one of us, bro. Oh. Gee, I don't even know if I've met you. 
Not that I'd quite say this, but you know, I'm, get, I'm putting a point here. Of course, I would hug them. Oh, great to see you again, brother. But hear me what I'm saying about who you are, your identity now and your new life. Oh, bro. <laughs> Gee, what's he on? <laughs> Never met the fella. And I'll be saying, what the heck's got into him? Oh, I tell you, Jesus got into him. Holy Spirit, God, he got the new life. He got a new beginning. He ain't bound by that anymore. People always try and pull you back. God, our Father always pulls you forward and up. Oh, I used to be so jealous. Oh, hey? I don't know what even jealousy means. Can you explain what jealousy is? That's not part of me. <laughs> it's just about beyond our comprehension, eh? But it's actually true. Is God a liar? The Bible says he's not a liar like man. This is actually true. This is, this is the problem sometimes. And a church like ours doing the incredible works that we must continue to do, do the good works that our Father in heaven be glorified, and they know that we're sons of God. We must can do it. But this is the thing we've got to watch out for, is that we always promote testimonies of that were incredibly sad, dysfunctional, or bad. A. And we do that because it brings... Um, understanding to people, people can relate to it because they're still in a fallen place. But the problem with that in a church like ours is it can suddenly become like the badge of honor. And there's no honor in it at all. Your identity is not a gangster or wanting to be one. Your, gangst, your identity is not that you were violent an abuser, a scrapper, a womanizer, a manonizer. <laughs> Whatever it might be, that's not your honor. All of that took from you, stole from you, wrecked you, abused you, and spat you out the other end. And praise God for his grace, picked you and I and me included up. Amen. But it's not who we are. Our badge of honor is I'm a new man walking like Christ walks. That's where our mana is found. And I hate it when I see the enemy working and tricking on, on, on our people, trying to pull them back and robbing mana from them. And it's because that's not Christ or the Holy Spirit. He empowers you with honor, courage, strength, integrity, righteousness, justice, all those beautiful things, not that other stuff. And you need to, stay, to tell yourself, nah, that's not me. That's not me. When I got saved, God overhauled me in every area of my life on how I lived. And I'm really pleased I allowed God, even though it was a bit crazy at times, and, and I'm sure some of it was just me. Um, but at the same time, I have no regret because I allowed God to plumb deep into my man, my manhood, and my spirit to renew me and really bring me into who I'm meant to be. And that's a journey, but I tell you, you need to allow God to do that. Don't let your past keep defining you now as a son of God. You're a son of God. I'm not a thief. I'm not a gangster. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not a big tough fella. I'm not a tough sister. I'm not just sexy. I'm not just desirous. I am you a woman. I'm lady. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Not me. Because <laughs> I tell you, I'm a man. <laughs> I'll just make sure because I started going, hey. <laughs> but you're a pure woman. You're a lady. So you hold yourself with grace and integrity, head up. You haven't got a man in your life. You actually don't need one until God gives you the right one. Why go through hell again with an ungoverned man or an ungoverned woman for you guys? Amen? Make sure they're governed. Make sure they're governed as they'll blow you away. Hurt you. Um, you see, that's why you got to know. Oh, should I say this? The old you. First you is dead. 
and the new you has arisen. You've got to see the, you've got to put a demarcation line on this. And the demarcation is the day you gave your life to Christ. That was when you were born again. That was the start. That's the birthday of all birthdays you should celebrate. I wish I remembered the date of my, birth, of my being born again, I, but I don't. I never realized how important it was. I, had no, I have no idea. But I wish I did because that's the birthday is more important to me than the 4th of July, 1965. And the world will always put me to my natural birth, but I'm more excited about my spiritual birth, my new birth, the new man. John used to be this. I don't know who he is. John Ferris? No, nah, no, nah, I don't know that John Ferris. I know Johnny Christ. He even has a cool sound. <laughs> Johnny Christ. Not Johnny the Christ. <laughs> then you need a straight jacket <laughs> but Johnny Christ Amen new man not the old one I'd rather hold you to your spiritual birth date than your natural birth date why? because the past is over and listen to this 2 Corinthians 5 17 again says behold all things have become new you know what behold means? what does behold mean? behold means to look to gaze to take in You've got to look, gaze, take in that everything about you has become new. Who's got an area that you've struggled with this week? Put your hand up. I've got my hand up. It's okay. I'm not going to call you out and tell us what it is. <laughs> just, just help me out. Well, you need to speak to that and say, you've been made new. You can't exist in my life anymore. I've been made new. You've got to pull the sword out, the scalpel, and cut that out. Because that's some rot trying to get into the new. And you need to say to it, I'm you. I'm you. You can't stay in me. That bit of rot can't be part of my personality. Can't be part of my heart. Can't be part of I've been made brand new. And you speak it and declare it. And then you let it go and carry on with a smile. Simple as that. Don't, you don't have to overdwell on it. You don't have to over say it every, oh, you know, five seconds. But you just say it. You declare it with some authority. You just share it, speak it. You know, this is your time with God, obviously, and move on. Because you need to start to look at this. You need to look at yourself as new. You need to behold yourself as new. Gaze at yourself as, it, as you are a new person. Start seeing it. Because the enemy's programmed you to think that you're bad, sad, and no good. Well, you are good, glad, and beautiful. Amen? Um, listen to this. You, are, you now have the glorious liberty, total freedom, to enjoy the pleasure of the new you. I want you enjoying the new you. The new you. Who knows, you know, when you go shopping and buy a, new, a whole new set of clothes, you know, shoes, trousers, and a jacket or a T-shirt or a shirt or something, or girls a dress, you know, in high heels for the girls, whatever, or flats, whatever you're into. You know, doesn't it make you feel good? It's okay. It's not a sin. Who's, I find it awesome. Oh, well, okay, can you take me and buy me a whole new wardrobe? <laughs> if you don't want to do it for you, you can do it for me because, man, I'll feel mean. I'll feel awesome. It does, eh? You know, if, imagine you could have that every day on the inside. And so you could be wearing something old, and worn out on the outside, or even second hand, but on the inside, you're walking new. Man, I feel good. Man, I feel awesome. You'll laugh more. You'll smile more. You'll handle pressure more. Your capacity will be bigger. Listen to this. You'll make more money. People will employ you. People will promote you. You are the person that employers are looking for. Everything about you will go up when you walk around knowing how new you are, how fresh you are, and you, all you've got to do is grab God's Word and start declaring it over your life. Listen to this. Don't sit around the grave of your past. Move forward. Don't sit around the grave of your past and don't sit around it crying. Self-pity goes when you focus on the reality of the new you. Self-pity grows when you focus on your past. Self-pity is a horrible thing to allow in your life. You've got to push it aside. 
got to push it. It was one of the big demons. I had to kill in my life as a young Christian. I had to get right. I felt so sorry for myself. And the more I felt sorry for myself and the tonguees I had for myself, you know what? The more it held me bond. But the moment I started praising God, the moment I got revelation that, man, I must be something special to go through what I went through. There must be something amazing on my life to go through that. There must be something amazing on you that you had to go through it. And you start celebrating everything and thanking God no matter what it is. I tell you what, you will grow and not go backwards. You will start to win the battles. You will start to have victories. You don't have to, but if you build and sit around the graveside of your past, man, you're going to get stuck. Listen to this, Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Hear that? From the power of darkness. It's really interesting. We're getting more. And I talked to uh, Jessie Lee. She said she's just had some too, and I'm sure some of the other leaders have. More people contacting us to want their houses blessed because they're having demonic um, demonic um, things happening in their, in their homes. And uh, I went over to a lady this week and I grabbed uh, Rewa to come with me because I don't go to ladies' houses on my own. And uh, so I grabbed Rewa to come with me and we went over there. We had an awesome time with this whanau. It was really beautiful. It was a young lady with uh, little kids and her mum came over as well. And they asked me what I was doing. And I says, well, look, it's pretty like, much like after a tangi tramping the house. And we're just going to come through here and, and I'm just going to declare in Jesus' name and bring the covering and the blessing of the blood of Christ on your home. And, and, and I said, to be honest, that actual demon actually knows that I'm here already. And it knows that I know, and I know that it knows, and it knows that I know that it has to go. And it's really upset right now, and it's really worried, and it's going to go, and you're going to be fine. And I just brought peace to them all, walked in there. As soon as I walked into one part of the house, the old, um, you know, uh, here stand up on your arms. And, and, that, and that's how I know that that's where that demon was. Get out in Jesus' name. Next minute that goes. And, you know, brought a peace and a real blessing. They're texting me back afterwards, thanking me. And I've never been called back to a home where I've gone and blessed it because of demonic stuff. And I've been into houses where doors are slamming. This one had walls, pictures to put the pictures up, hook them all up, fall off again, put them up, fall off again. All sorts of freaky stuff. This is happening all the time. Now, as sons of God, you've got the power. Do you hear that? Not just me because I've got a title. You've got the power. You wanted to have that song come on right now, eh? You've got the power. You've got the power. But why is it? Because it says here, you have been delivered from the power of darkness, from the power of darkness. And listen, conveyed, that means to be uh, moved up or translated into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of His sins, redemption of His blood. And the forgiveness of His sins means... God has totally forgotten about your past. He's totally redeemed you, totally pulled you out of it. It is all washed away. It is all wiped off. There's no accusations against you. There's only one who will try and accuse you. It's called the accuser of the brethren, the devil. And God says, shut up because it never happened. Because the blood of my son blotted it out and washed it away. You cannot accuse the sons of God. He cannot touch you anymore because you've come out from His power. He is disempowered when it's come to you. People outside of Christ are under the power of darkness, but you are not under the power of darkness. Therefore, you can set people free from the power of darkness because you've been translated, moved up, elevated into the kingdom, listen, of sonship. It's the kingdom of His Son that says there, black and white, the kingdom of His Son. You've been elevated to kingdom sonship. You're now a son of God. You're now, it's not even God really, it's now Father, Father, Father. God is Old Testament, Father is New Testament, Father, Father. I call upon you, Father, Father, come, Father, come. Thank you, my big brother showed me how to do it. He just went up there and he told the demon to shut up and get out. Because you're no longer under the power because only someone who's made brand new can carry the newness and the purity and the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. And that's you. That's why He had to make you brand new so you could carry the newness of God and the newness of the Spirit of God. How oh, you should be going out here fizzing with power. It's like, where's someone with some demonic stuff? I want to get in there and shift it. Shift the thing, shift the sucker. Someone's struggling, pray for them. Tell them, gotta go, demon. 
curse, you've got to go. And you don't have to spend an hour doing it. Two, maybe some, Jesus just sometimes didn't even say a word. He just touched them because he knew. He, he knew the newness of who he was and the power. Speak it. He's delivered you from darkness and translated you, moved you up to the kingdom of his sons. Let me just finish here. In 1 Samuel, and I know you might have heard Bishop speak yesterday, but I just wanted to grab a verse, 1 Samuel chapter 10, here verse 5. And it says here, And after that you shall come to the hill of God, where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you have come into the city, that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Let me just, just translate a little bit, bring this into New Testament understanding, because there's a lot of truth in here. And it says, they come to the hill of God. You're at the hill of God right now. The hill of God speaks of the house of God, something that stands out, that stands high, that's elevated. They came down from the house of God, and there's nothing greater than you gathering on a Sunday in the house of God or any other given time we might. The power of gathering, the power of gathering. And I know one of the subtle works of the enemy right now it, through this COVID is to get you just going on live. Just watch it after a service. Just watch it from home. I want to tell you that will rip your undies and rip you off and lessen your walk with God big time if that's all you do. It, you've got to gather. The Bible says do not forsake the gathering together of the sons of God. Never forsake it. Oh, only time I've, I've missed the odd service, most of the time it's because... Sorry. It's because I've been real sick, like real sick, like running to the toilet type sick, you know. You don't want a person here when they're that sick. Please stay home, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, sort of stuff. But otherwise, man, I'm going to be at church. I'm going to be at church. It's so important. They went to, they came down from a greater place. And it says, as they came down, they were amongst a group of prophets. In other words, they're amongst a group of sons. We're a prophetic, the sons of God are a prophetic voice, a voice of God to their generation. They came down and they were with a group. See a group together? You see, we can only do it all together. We can't do it alone. You can't do it. You won't win alone. You won't get the victories that you deserve alone. You won't prosper and do well alone. You've got to have each other, warts and all. Rough bits, bad bits. That's why the enemy, one of his best, biggest ones, he tries people getting offended with one another and it caused them to leave church. You came to church for God, not the brothers, but then he joined you to the brothers. So keep coming for God and God will sort the brothers out as well as you out because sometimes you're the stumbling block. <laughs> so don't point the finger at your brother. Take the log out of your eye before you take the speck out of theirs. Leave them to God. Forgive them and leave them to God. Amen. That's real good church understanding there. Um, and they came down, and it says they had all these instruments. You know what they, they, they came down? It says from a high place, a good place. They were full of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. They, they were full of positivity. They were full of faith. You know what I love being around my brothers and sisters? It's because they're full of faith. The people I choose to surround myself mainly with is those full of faith. And then those who are full of faith, I want to go and reach those who've got no faith and bring hope and faith to them. But I do it out of always out of a place of strength, never out of a place of weakness. There is no such thing as a lone ranger and having your little mate Tonto. You gotta kill that and come in and be part of something God is doing and great. And it says there, and they went on, it says then the verse six says, The Spirit of the Lord. See the spirit that's on your circle is the spirit that's gonna get on you. What what's who's your circle? Who's your circle? I know my circle. And that's the spirit allowed to encourage me. Any other circle that I enter, I'm taking that stronger spirit from a higher place and then I want to start to infuse it. So I can go anywhere at any time. It doesn't matter what, who, where the place is, and etc. The only place I wouldn't go is where there's uh, nudity, woman nudity. It's probably the only place I wouldn't go. That's the one place I won't, won't go to. Anywhere else, I will go there. Not a problem, no sweat. 
not worried, not fearful, not scared. There's some wisdom in how I do it. Like I'd never go to somewhere if there's a lot of drinking after 10 o'clock. I, w- I won't go there because drunkenness will cause things to happen because demons are left un- ungoverned, okay? But otherwise, I can go anywhere. Awesome, eh? See, that's the liberty of the sons of God. And I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to fall. I'm not, you can chuck as much temptation at me as you like, but I'm not going to give into it because I don't want it because I've got something better. When you're in a place of strength like that, you're an effector, not one who will be infected. Become an infector in your generation. Go and infect them with a heavenly virus of goodness. Amen? And then it says this, and this is the bit. And it says, and you will prophesy with them. You'll get touched by that. And it says, and be turned into another man. Turned into another man. God's turning you into another man. And that's the power of the gospel of Christ is he doesn't come to buff you up, polish you up. He creates in you a new man. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become you. You are a new man. And just one last verse, Philippians 3 verse 13. Brothers, I do not count myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, the great apostle said, the one thing I do, that's powerful. The one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I forget the past. Forget the past. It's gone. It's worth nothing. It's worth nothing now. I forget it. It's gone. Watangi day is gone. Forget about it. Forget about it. Say to yourself, forget about it. And just move forward. Forget about that stuff. Now, I know sometimes you've got to visit some stuff because it's got a real stronghold in the mind. But you've got to be, first of all, you could actually smash a lot of this down by start saying, forget about it. It's no longer got a power of you and declaring God's word. If you just use positive thinking, it won't work. You've got to use the spiritual power. You've got, this is a spiritual power I'm talking about. You've got to use this way. This is the recipe to do this. You've got to declare God's word. Thy word is he put in thy mouth. The sword of the Spirit is not getting your Bible and waving it around your bedroom and going, right, demon, go, go, swat you like a swatter. You know, like one of those fly swat things some people have. You know, my grandparents always used to have a fly swatter. You know, I used to love it, go around swatting dirty flies, but they make a horrible mess. I'd just rather spray the suckers now. Um, you know, swat, people, you can't do that. You've got to put this word here, in here, in my heart, that is in my mouth, and then declare it, I'm a new creature. I forget that past. I forget about, I choose not to live like that anymore. I'm not an angry man anymore. I'm not an abuser anymore. I'm not a drug addict anymore. You become brand new in Christ, you're not an alcoholic. I don't care what AA says, you are not an alcoholic. If you've done that, and God bless you, I think it's awesome that's been part of your journey, and I actually salute that, and I back that, and I encourage you, that. that's great. But I will never, under, the, under my voice, ever allow someone to think it's okay for someone else to say to you, that's you forever. That's the most horriblest things I've ever heard. Because I know what God says, you can be brand new. You're not an alcoholic. You're not a jailbird. You're not an ex-inmate. You're brand new. You're not an ex-inmate. You're not an ex-inmate. You're brand new. Jail? <laughs> oh, you heard about it on the news. Only time you pull that out is when you're raving to someone who's in there or been there or wants to go there and you're trying to pull them out of darkness. That's, that's, that's clever. That's now using wisdom to win souls. Hear that? Really important. Listen to this. This is it. Your blessing, your victory is not in your history. It is in your future. The history is history. Your future is yet to be written. Write it the way you want it to be. How do you want your future to look like? Write it now, today. How do I want it to be? Man, I want, I want, to, have an, I want to be an awesome husband to Ellie. Because she's had some tough times with her husband. But I tell you what, I want her to, I want to be an awesome husband. I want to be an amazing father to my children. And they deserve that. I want to be an incredible papa to my grandchild and grandchildren of the future. 
I want to be so blessed I never have to worry about paying bills. I want to be mortgage free. I want to just be able to go and buy a new truck without even thinking about it and buying the one that I want. See, now I'm going into my personal world of my future. I'm going to write it. I want to touch thousands and thousands of more people. See, suddenly I start losing focus on you when I start talking like that. I literally do. It's like I go, boom, I'm writing my future. I'm going south tomorrow, and all the way down there and all the way back, I want to leave deposits of gold with people. Somehow, Lord, use me. I can see myself sitting on that boat and talking to someone about Christ and who we are. I see meeting someone and touching, encouraging someone, move, Lord, even lead someone to Christ to get them along to a local church. Thank you, Lord. I want to write my future. I want to write it before I get there so when I get there, I know what's already happening because I've already written it. That's how Jesus lived. That's how my big brother did it. Well, I'm going to do the same. If it was good for him, it's going to be good for me. It's going to be good for you. Amen? Live by faith, not fear. Don't live out of regret. Live in this new life. Amen? Don't bring up people's past. Don't bring up their hurts that they hurt you with. Ask God to forgive them and ask God to heal you and move on and choose not to bring it up. Amen? How beautiful would that be? Forgive your husband. Forgive your wife. Forgive your children. Forgive those around you. Don't carry that on to your new day your new month, your new decade, your new season, your new life. Let it go. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. God forgot about it. Why don't you? Why don't I? Amen? I want you to stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hand to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to be a people who forget about it. Help us to be a people who press towards the high call in Christ. Help us, God, I pray, to be a people that can consume, not just sing about it, but we actually get consumed by you and everything about you. Father, I pray right now, Thank you for fresh power. Thank you, Lord God, that we're a new people. Lord, we've been given a new beginning, a new start. Yesterday is over. Today is new. We're going to walk out of here in the newness of resurrection life. Father, I declare breakthroughs. Lord, I think we've been moved out of the power of darkness and translated, conveyed, moved up to the kingdom of sons, the kingdom of sonship. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, may we go forth and may you do anything and everything through us that's needed to take place. Father, in the name of Jesus, watch over your word, Lord, I pray right now to perform it. Lord, let the people be glorious and victorious, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we all said together, amen, amen. Give God a big shout right now. Let Him seal the deal in you. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you've turned the switch from the past to the newness as a real reality. Let me do this. If you're here today and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ and made Him the Lord of your life, I want you to pray and I would love you to and I invite you to pray this prayer with me right now. Um, you haven't given your heart to Christ, please pray this. Let, has, today's the day for you to get a new life, a new beginning. Get born again. Get a new start. There might be one person here that just needs to do this. Might be more. I don't know. But let's pray this right now together. Pray it out loud so your own ears hear you, okay? Pray this. Dear Jesus, I ask today for you to come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins and wrongdoings. Please now be the Lord of my life. Father, I come to you. Receive me because I will now follow you all the days of my life. And I will imitate Jesus Christ, my big brother. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God one more bit of a shout there. It's beautiful. If you prayed that today for the first time,
or you might have been a Christian when you were younger or years ago. I don't know, but you prayed it out of a real honest heart. I just want you to raise your hand to me and say, Pastor John, that was me today. Anybody? Just raise your hand up. I want to give you that opportunity. Awesome. Anyone else? Bless you, brother. Anybody else today? Just raise your hand up. Don't be shy. I just want to help you. Awesome. Okay. If you raise your hand up, what I'd love to be able to do is, I'm just going to dismiss the service, but if you're able to just come up the front here, and I'm just going to pray for you, okay? Shake your hand, pray for you, and just ask God's blessing on you. That would be really, really awesome to do that. Hey, God bless your church. Have a great day. The cafe's there. Um, I think next weekend's the 14th day. Hey? Yeah, so um, next Sunday's going to be really cool. Um, Destiny Productions are going to do a special um, uh, band set down here. The, the new um, cafe is going to be all fully operational uh, next Sunday. Upstairs, all fully operational. So you better go through and look at all the new, what we've done there. All fully operational. So it's going to be a real cool service next Sunday. I'm not going to be here, unfortunately. So it might be slightly not as quite as, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. It'll be even better. Um, and uh, it's going to be really cool. So come along, invite a friend. It's going to be a great, great service. And... Uh, You'll really enjoy it. So, hey, God bless you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you when I get back. Remember to keep us up in your prayers. Be most appreciated. Hey, for those who put their hand up, just want to come here, and I'd love to meet you and uh, shake your hand. That would be great. God bless you. Love you.